Welcome back everyone to another video and in this tutorial we are going to be learning how to build a blockchain integration. So this is a way that you can allow users to link a blockchain account to their discord username so that your discord bot can accept crypto payments. So some simple use cases for this. Let's say that you had a discord bot where you were selling things like reactions or rolls. Well, you could accept crypto payments for those. Or let's say that you allowed users to deposit coins and they could buy in-game items such as digital corn or swords for your Discord game. Or let's say that you had a Discord bot that allowed users to list items for sale, but it may cost a fee in crypto to be able to list those items. So lots of various ideas. And in this tutorial series, of course, we are going to be using the new Boston blockchain because first of all, it's the greatest blockchain ever. And second of all, it's just really fast and easy to use in these examples. However, the core concepts that we're going to be learning throughout this series, you are going to be able to port that over to lots of different blockchains and cryptos. So now that we have a basic overview of what we're building, let's go ahead and dive into the technicalities of how this bad boy is going to actually work. So the first thing first is that the Discord user is going to run this register command and they're going to pass in their account number which is something like this here's mine right here so this register command is essentially saying that hey i want to link this blockchain account with my discord username so that's what's going on there and then our bot is going to ask does the account number that you're trying to register already belong to a user now again in this architecture, whenever I say register or registration, this means essentially an attempt of a user to link a blockchain account to their Discord account. Now, whenever that registration is complete, as we'll see later on, we're going to be creating a user object. And when a user object is linked to a account, this means that everything is good. Everything is verified. That's kind of the end step. But anyways, now we can go back to here and say, does this account number that this user is trying to register already belong to an existing user? Now, if so, we just want to throw back an error message that says, hey, this is already registered. You can't link the same uh, blockchain account number to two different Discord users. Now, if it's not already registered, then this is going to be the more common flow. We first have to say, does this Discord user ID already have a registration? In other words, are they already trying to register or link another account number? So if they are, then what we want to do is we just want to update the registration with the new account number because maybe whenever they ran this command, they typed in the wrong account number or something. So this allows them to update it and scrolling back down here. Now, if they don't already have a pending registration, then what we want to do is we want to just create a brand new one and for this flow, the way that we're going to link it is whenever these registrations are created or these attempts to link the blockchain account to their Discord username, what the bot is going to do is it's going to generate a random verification code and then it's going to send it to them in a DM. So only this Discord user is going to know about this unique verification code, kind of like how those emails work when you uh, include a token in the URL and then you email the user, but it's kind of the basic concept. So now with that being said, let's pop over to the verification flow diagram right here. So the bot after this registration command is complete, it's going to send them a DM that is going to look something like this. Uh, it's going to say send one coin to the bot account. And it's going to say from, I didn't include this part, but from the account that you're trying to register with the unique memo. So essentially only the user who knows about this unique verification code is going to be able to send it from that account with this in the memo. And the memo is just the description of whenever you send coins. It's just a little, you know, bit of text that you can include with your transaction. But anyways, the user is then going to send this to the bot's account. And then what the bot account is going to be doing, our Discord bot, is it's going to be listening to the blockchain 
for any incoming transactions. Now, when it receives a transaction, the bot is gonna look at it, it's gonna say, does the sender of this transaction, does their account number and memo match a registration? If yes, it means that someone is trying to register or link a blockchain account with a Discord user account. So now the next thing that it needs to ask is, if yes, does the account number already belong to a user? Now, if it already belongs to a user, that means that this blockchain account number is already registered. And then we're just gonna throw back an error. Now, I wanna pay a little bit of attention to this because this is probably the only tricky part in this whole flow. So check this out. Back here, whenever we had our Discord bot accept this register command, it was a Discord user saying, hey, I wanna register this blockchain account to my username. Now, if this account was already registered to user, we're just gonna throw back an error message right here. So why do we need to do this double check right like this? Well, this is just for a special edge case. And to kind of describe it, imagine this. Imagine if I release this Discord bot and right away, two people tried to register my account number right here. So of course I try to register it and then someone else tried to register it. Well, before anything was verified, the bot could have two pending registrations open. Now let's say I went through and I, of course, completed the registration process. So I already linked it to my official user. Now when that second Discord user tried to register again, and this is a really a weird edge case, but let's just say I had two Discord accounts, is that that's when you would say, hey, this already belongs to a Discord user, so you're gonna get that error message. So again, this is gonna be very rare, but since you know it does involve cryptocurrency, then you wanna just make sure to account for all edge cases. So moving along, does this account number already belong to a user? If not, then we're gonna say, is this a new user that doesn't exist in, we're gonna be using MongoDB for a database, but is this a brand new user that we're pretty much creating or registering for the first time? So if it is indeed a brand new user and they're just linking their blockchain account to their Discord account for the very first time, then we're gonna create a brand new user object in our database with zero balance. Now, if not, then it means that there's already a, an existing user that already had a different account number linked up. And what we wanna do is we just wanna update because maybe they just created a new um, blockchain account and they're just trying to update their account to something else. For example, I have Bucky and then I have this other one, Baku. So that is that flow right there. Now remember, this is the flow we go down whenever a user's or the sender's account matches a registration. So they're trying to link their blockchain account to their Discord account. Now, if the bot receives a payment from the New Boston Blockchain Network that doesn't match a registration, then that means, of course, it's not a user trying to register. So it would either mean one of two things. Now, if it's a user, that is sending coins to the bot account, that just means that they're trying to make a deposit. So in this case, we're just gonna take their balance and increase it by whatever amount they sent. Now, the last case, which, I mean, this isn't a bad thing, but um, I don't think it's gonna happen that often, is if the bot receives a deposit or a payment that doesn't match a registration and it doesn't match a user, that just means that it's a random person sending coins to this bot account. So you can just view it as a donation. But most of the time, it's either gonna be someone trying to go through the registration process or deposit coins into their account. And by the way, since this is just a basic framework, what I am gonna do is just have the users, whenever they send coins, they just have a balance. But your bot doesn't have to be structured this way. Instead of depositing the coins and going to user balance, they can deposit coins and they can buy rolls or they can buy in-game items or they can pay for something. But I'm just gonna have a balance that increments just because like I said, we're just covering the basic concepts right now. So now that we understand how everything works, and again, what we'll be doing is coming back to this and referencing it. So you know, don't worry if you didn't catch everything right away, we're gonna be coming back 
But there we go. Let's go ahead and jump back into the code and get started. Now, just to give you guys a quick overview of what I did before this tutorial started is I did create a git ignore file. And this is just ignoring some basic stuff, my IDE files, some testing, environment, git keep. And by the way, all of this is gonna be on um, GitHub. It's gonna be under the repo Discord Python framework. So, you know, don't worry about if uh, I'm going over all of this too fast. And another thing I did is I created this basic readme on how to set up the project. So like I said, we're gonna be using MongoDB as a database for this tutorial. And I'm gonna be showing you guys how to set it up with your project, but as a prerequisite, just go ahead and get it installed on your computer. I have instructions right here for Mac. If someone else wants to add Windows or Linux, that would be great. But I already actually made an entire MongoDB um, tutorial series. So if you guys need help installing it, or if you run into any issues, either watch that, or of course you can pop over in the discord and anyone in the community, myself included, if I'm available, will be able to help you out. But anyways, uh, like I said, make sure that you install MongoDB before you get started. And the initial structure that we're going to need to create is a database called discord DB. So let me pop open MongoDB compass. I like to use, and I'm just going to create a new database and this is called Discord DB. And for the collection, we're just going to be creating one right off the bat called users. And if you remember from these diagrams, let's see, this user is going to be uh, one of the objects that we store. The other one is registration. And we're also going to have one other one as you guys are going to see. But the cool thing about MongoDB is that if you create an object, and the collection doesn't already exist, it's just gonna go ahead and create one on the fly for you. So even though we're gonna have more collections in addition to users, we only need to have one collection and then the rest will just be auto-created on the fly. Pretty cool, pretty cool. So, all right, we created our initial MongoDB database and collection. And then now let's go ahead and create our requirements.txt file. So let me go ahead and right click new file requirements.txt. Make sure to add these in. And I actually have these saved. So let me go ahead and paste those in. And that is this. So of course we're gonna be using discord.py, pymongo. This is gonna allow us to connect our Python project Mongo, python.env, so we can have environment variables and we're gonna be doing this because that way we don't have to store our Discord token right in our source code because it's not the best practice. So instead we'll be following best practices and store that in an environment variable. And then this request is just so we can make network request because we of course are gonna be reaching out to the blockchain to listen to transactions. All right, so those are all the requirements or dependencies that we need to install. So now let me go ahead and copy this command. And this is just to install those from that file. Again, it's just in case you didn't see that was kind of quick pip three install slash r requirements.txt. And now everything looks good. And just popping back in my requirements. All right, so no issues or anything and we are good to go. And before we get started coding, we actually want to do one other thing. I believe this is mentioned in the setup and that is one, create a .env file. So let me go ahead and do that. .env, let me close this right here. And it says in the root directory, so right there, and make sure you set this environment variable, which is gonna be discord token. So this example is of course not gonna work for you guys and it's not even gonna work for me because I already generated a new one. So hold on, on the right side of my screen, I'm generating a new token and there you go. So either way, go ahead and create a .env file and make one environment variable called discord token and then make sure to include your token right there. And by the way, this file is in our git ignores so whenever you post this up to um, GitHub, it's not gonna share your token. So that's why we're doing all this. Now, another thing that I wanna do is I actually wanna create a config package and all of our core settings are gonna be here. 
So make a new file, we'll just call it settings, settings.py. And again, anything that you want to keep private is going to be in your .env. And then anything that we're going to be putting in our settings are just like constants for our application, but they're not private. No like passwords or anything like that. It's mostly just like um, application settings. Think of, think of it like that. So first thing, import OS. And we'll say from .env, we're going to import load dot env and then we're going to call this load dot env and what this is going to do is it's going to load in all of our environment variables so that we can treat them in our application the same as we could treat um environment variables from our operating system so it just is a way in case you never worked with uh, this python dot env to pretty much load in your project environment variables as operating system ones. But anyways, let's go ahead and create all of the constants that we're gonna need. And we are first gonna need some application constants. And I am gonna name this maximum confirmation checks. And what this variable is going to be is how many times we are going to check for confirmations, and actually let me pull this up. It's actually pretty cool. Where is it? There we go. All right. So essentially, whenever we get a, or whenever our bot receives a transaction, what it does is it's gonna see that and say, okay, this is a transaction. However, a transaction does not mean a verified payment. A transaction, that the bot sees at first is just gonna say that it's an attempted payment. Now, in order, like many blockchains, to verify that payment, you need to wait for confirmations. So once it receives it, in, in our blockchain, it happens right away. But either way, what we're gonna do is we're gonna say, once we receive it, we're gonna pull the blockchain X number of times looking for these confirmations. So we will say, we're gonna look 20 times and if we still can't find a confirmation, then that means that the payment was just a failure and it's invalid. So that's all this means. We can tweak it later on if we need to make it longer or shorter, but you guys are gonna see how this works when we get to it. Now, the other constants I wanna add are just for the new Boston blockchain network. And the first thing we're gonna have is a bank IP. And we're just gonna use my bank, which is 54.183.16.194. And after this, we're gonna use the bank protocol and we're just using HTTP. Again, we're on the alpha net. I don't know when you guys are watching this, but uh, it's 2021 and we're still on the alpha net of our blockchain, so HTTP. And for the bot account number, this is going to be the account number that, of course, if you can't tell, belongs to the bot and basically saying that listen for payments to this account number. So, of course, make sure it's one that you own or else uh, someone else is going to be getting your payments. But there you go. Now, after this, we're just going to have some discord constants and I'm just going to call this discord token. Now this is going to be equal to this value right here. And that's why we needed to import OS right here because we're gonna be plucking that from os.get environment variable. And this environment variable is just gonna be called discord token. So that's how you do that. Let me clean this up a little bit. All right, now last but not least, we are gonna have some constants for Mongo and that is the Mongo database name. And if you remember, the database name was discord-db. And after this, the Mongo host is just gonna be localhost, just hosted on my own machine right now. And then Mongo port, we're gonna be setting this equal, well, this is actually just the default, is 27017. But I just want to hard code it because, um, of course, whenever you're deploying this, you may have to change some of these settings. So there you go. 
But that is all that we're gonna have in our settings, basically our constants needed for further development. So let's go ahead and get started with our basic boilerplate from discord.ext. We are first gonna import commands, and then we will just name our object bots, and this is equal to commands.bots. And for the command prefix, I like this little arrow. Maybe I like it because it reminds me of the new Boston logo, but either way, that's what we're gonna roll with. And what we can actually probably do right after this is we can say if name is equal to dunder main, then we just want to do bots.run. And then we can just pass in our Discord token. And from this, we can do config.settings import Discord token. So there you go. And let's also just go ahead and make that on ready event listener. So we can say bot.event, and then we'll say async def on ready. Now, whenever our bot is ready, even though we aren't gonna write this logic just yet, we are gonna actually start pulling the blockchain. In other words, we're gonna start listening for transactions right away. So I'm just gonna write a little note here so we don't forget, start pulling blockchain. And then we'll say for now, we'll just print out ready just so we can test that everything is working. So let me just go ahead and run this mostly just to make sure that my token is legit. All right. So it says on ready and a pop open discord. It looks like our bot is online. Beautiful. All we needed for now. So now let me go ahead and stop this and let's first start coding our register command. So let me copy this bit lazy and instead of on ready remember we are just going to name it register now the sample that we're going to be using is of course register and let me just copy my account number all right just so we can see what's kind of going on so we're going to be making a custom command called register and this isn't an event, it's actually a command, singular. All right, and as you know, whenever you have a command, it takes context. And since this is taking in one argument, that's going to be the account number, we can actually rename this to account number. And there you go. Now, the very, very first thing we wanna do before we get into any of the good stuff is we want to take a look at what they passed in right here, and we want to verify that it's a properly formatted account number. The reason for this is because if it is not, and they try to register something like tuna, then everything else is gonna be kind of messed up because it's gonna to try to listen to an account number or transactions that is impossible to exist, and well, really, if they do that, we wanna give them feedback right away. So now let's go ahead and make this verification function. However, I don't just wanna put it right in here because I want this main.py to be really focused on these bot commands. And this validation is really more of like part of the new Boston protocol. So with that said, I'm gonna go ahead and make a new package called utils. And I'm gonna create a new file and I'm just gonna call it new Boston. Now in here, we'll make a function that says is valid, let me bump this up to, is valid account number. And this is going to take an account number, or in other words, some kind of string. And then we can just say that this checks if the, checks if the given account number is valid. Now, just to give you guys a real quick overview, the account numbers that are valid in our network, one, these are actually 64 digits long. So it has to be 64 characters long. Another thing is you need to make sure that you can convert it to bytes because this is a hexadecimal representation of a big integer. So as long as you can convert it to a byte value, then it's legit. So you guys are gonna see it's, it's like uh, six lines of code, or maybe a little bit longer, but whatever. So the first thing is if the length in, even though it may be a string already, we just wanna make sure that we convert it to a string so that this function doesn't tweak out. 
So say if the value that you passed in for the account number after being converted to a string is not equal to 64 characters long, basically, we just want to go ahead and return false because it has to be 64 characters long uh, for show. So another thing that we're going to do, like I said, is we want to try to convert this from the hexadecimal value that it is to a byte value. So, okay, this will ensure that they can't just pass in a 64 character long uh, string or sentence or anything like that. So in order to do this, what you can do is bytes from hex, and then you can just convert the account number and we don't need to store it in a variable or do anything because if this cannot convert, then it's just going to tweak out. So we can just say accept exception. We really don't care why it can't convert because at this point we just want to say, is it legit? Can it convert or not? If not, then we just want to return false. Now, if it is 64 characters long, and if you can convert it to a legitimate byte value, then and only then we want to return true. So there you go. There is our function is valid account number. So now let's go ahead and import that. So from utils the new Boston import is valid account number and back in our register function. Let me zoom out just a little bit, just a little bit. We can now check if not is a valid account number for the account number that they passed in. What we actually want to do right here is we want to send them back an error message and then we are going to want to return. Now, actually, let me leave a comment. Uh, send back error message right here. Now, of course, we can just do, you know, get the channel, send, whatever. But what I want to do is I want to standardize the way that we send back messages to them. And I want to use an embed because whenever you are using Discord, an embed really differentiates between that and user type commands. And I also just always like sending back messages from the bot using embeds. It, it makes your Discord bot look a little bit more professional. So let's go ahead and create that function now. Now, again, I know that we can just use it directly right here, but what I wanna do is actually standardize a few things, namely the color of this. And I don't wanna give the flexibility to change the color right in here, even though we may later on. But for right now, just to keep everything standard, we're gonna be using a separate function. So in utils right here, let's make another file for discord utils. And we can say async def send embed. Now in here, I'm actually being thrown in the star right here. And this is gonna take the context, the title and the description of the embed that we're gonna send back to the user. And let me pump this back up. I always forget. And just to leave a comment, we will say something like send a simple bed with a title and a description. Now, the reason I put this star right here is because whenever you have star, it forces the rest of the arguments to be named. In other words, you, what is this function going to be called? Send embed right like this. So anyways, um, the point being is that instead of just, and we didn't import it, that's why we're getting these errors, but instead of just passing in values right here, it forces you to actually pass them in with equal sign. And I just like it because it, it makes your code a little bit less error prone. Again, for some simple functions like this, it's probably not needed, but it is helpful in some cases. And you guys are gonna be seeing what's going on right when we actually invoke this function. But that's uh, the background behind that. So what we want to do is we just want to make a variable, first of all, called, and we actually need to import Discord, the Discord package. So what we want to do is from discord.embed. And again, I'm going to be going over this pretty quick because I already went over it in, I think, my last tutorial or a couple of tutorials ago. So the title is just going to be equal to the title that we passed in. The description is equal to the description. Now for the color of all of these, we are going to be using discord dot color. Go with the English spelling. I believe that is. And we're just going to be using red. 
and this is going to standardize the color of all messages that we send from the bot and last but not least we can just do await context dot send and we're just going to send back the embed as the embed now let me clean this up and import it so we'll say uh, from utils dot discord and well I actually forgot the name of that just made it like two seconds ago bro all right so yeah this is what i was saying right here where instead of just being able to pass in the context uh title description as you know three strings like this whatever and then whatever because whenever you do this it's it's hard to tell like wait what, one, what was i supposed to pass in first oh context uh, and then wait after that was a title or description it kind of just uh doesn't allow you to have that ambiguity i guess so let me show you guys what i like to do so whenever i have a function with multiple arguments i like to separate each of those out on a new line and i don't know just kind of an ocd thing but for the context of course we're just going to be passing in the context for the title we can just say something like, uh, okay, so this is gonna be what we send back if their account number is invalid. We'll just say something like invalid for right now. And for the description, we can say something like invalid account number. And since this is an async function, we also need to await this. And then with that, everything should be good to go. So we can actually, let me just go ahead and I always like to keep my code nice and clean. All right, so now we can actually go ahead and test this because we do have logic where they can basically pass in a valid account number. And as of now, it's just gonna do nothing. And then if they pass in an invalid one, then it's just gonna print out uh, this little embed right here. So let me copy this because we know this is the valid command. And now if I go ahead and rerun this, pop open my discord bot and this was from before when i was playing around with it but either way this is me trying to register a legit account number gonna press enter and nothing happened so that's good so now let me go ahead and try to register an invalid account number and i'll just say register dog and then we go beautiful it just says invalid invalid account number there we go so that is our basic account number validation check so now let's move on. All right, so after we have a valid account number down here, then what are we supposed to do? Well, lucky for us, we planned out everything ahead of time and we can reference our diagram to know exactly what logic we need to code next. So we got a valid account number, cool, cool, cool. Next question that we have to answer is, does the account number that was passed in through this register command belong to an existing user. Now remember, our existing users are gonna be stored in Mongo, so now we're gonna to have to get a connection to Mongo. So how do we do that? Well, we are going to be using PyMongo, so let me just go ahead and import that now. So that's actually from PyMongo. We are gonna import the Mongo client because this is the essentially the Python connection to Mongo. And in order to use this, you can make an object called Mongo and set this equal to Mongo client. And when you initialize this connection, it takes in two pieces of information. The first one is the host that you want to connect to. And we're just running this on local host. And the second one is the port number. So since we're going to need these, let me go ahead and import those from settings. And that is Mongo host and then the Mongo port number and you can just copy those and pass those in in this order. So the next thing that we're gonna need before, let me see if I can pop open MongoDB Compass again, is before we can access this user's collection, because that's what we're gonna need to check, we first need to get access to this database, which is gonna be the store of all of our collections, and we name this discord-db. Now, in order to do that, if you just make a variable called database, you can set it equal to your Mongo connection. And this is actually really easy in order to do. 
because you pretty much just access them like uh, Python dictionaries. So the name of our database, we can just use this right here, this constant MongoDB name. So make sure you import that first of all, and then you can reference it right like that, just so this shows up on your guys' screen. Let me just go ahead and clean this up a bit. All right, there you go. So anyways, uh, point being is that we needed to check something in MongoDB, namely, does a user already exist for the existing account number? And in order to do that, we just got a connection to Mongo and then we referenced the database. Now, in order to reference the actual user's collection, since we're gonna be using this a lot and I wanna make sure that I don't overwrite it, I'm gonna be making a constant and using all caps for that. And with the database, so I can just copy that, to access a certain collection, again, same thing, you pretty much just treat it like a Python dictionary where you can just pass in the collection name right like this. I guess not pass it in, it's not a function, but there you go. So now with this user's collection, what we can do is we can use it to see if we have a user with the matching account number. So how do we do that? Well, we can just say, we'll store the results in a variable called user. And then what we can do is that user's collection, which this is all connected to Mongo by this point, we're just gonna say, we're gonna use this find one function. And in here, you can basically type in what is the field you're looking for, and then what is the value you're trying to match, basically like a filter. So we're gonna say, look at the account number, key and if any value matches the account number we're trying to pass in then that means that user must exist so anyways what we're going to say is something like this if a user is found then we're just going to want to send back a error message that says already registered since that account number is already taken and then from here we can just return because we don't wanna go through with any more logic. Once they get that error message, we kinda wanna break out of our code. And of course, instead of this comment right here, we have our handy little function that can send embeds, and there you go. So we, for this title, can say something like already registered. And then for the description, let me actually make this a F string because we can say the account and then pass in the account number, just as some you know additional feedback is already registered. All right, there you go, scroll out. All right, so we're essentially gonna validate the account number, and if that's good, we're gonna look at the account number, we're gonna see if it already matches an already registered user. If so, then even though the account number was valid, we wanna say, hey, this account number already belongs to someone, you can't register it because we don't want multiple Discord users hooked into the same account number.